A very nice question for you. Which of the following is not required for the synthesis of ATP by chemiosmosis? Now, the synthesis of ATP from ADP. Okay. This is called as phosphorylation. When this takes place in the presence of light, it is called as photophosphorylation. Now, what is ADP? ADP is ATP. What is ATP? ATP is nothing but adenosine triphosphate. This is the energy currency of life. Now, here we are looking at the phenomenon of photosynthesis, which is divisible into two steps, the light reaction and the dark reaction, that is light dependent and the light independent reaction. Now, during the light dependent reaction or the light reaction is when that this energy rich molecule called ATP is formed. How is it formed? The solar energy is trapped, sunlight is trapped by the chlorophyll molecules and converted into this chemical energy called as ATP. Now, where does it take place? Obviously, it takes place in the organal that we call as chloroplast. Now, chloroplast, as we all know, has the stroma that is the matrix and on that we have the thylakoids. Remember children, so if, you, if this is the chloroplast, which is a double membrane structure, I've not drawn the second membrane, but I just wanted you to get an idea. So these are the grana, singular is granum, right? And each granum, if you look at it, is made up of coin-like structures called as thylakoids. And each thylakoid is a membrane system with a space that is called as lumen. So when you look at the entire phenomenon of uh, photosynthesis, the light independent reaction takes place in the stroma and the light dependent reaction takes place in the thylakoid. Now here, the very important component that helps in the synthesis of ATP is nothing but the enzyme ATP synthase. Now where is ATP synthase present? In ATP synthase, suppose this is the thylakoid. Let me show you the uh, image and then explain to you. So this is a pictorial uh, representation of the thylakoid membrane, basically part of the chloroplast. So if you look at it, this is the thylakoid membrane and here you have the stroma okay now this is your ATP synthase now ATP synthase is made up of two parts you have the CFO this is the CFO part like a cylindrical region okay this is in the thylakoid membrane and the CF1 is projecting into the stroma now within the CFO is a channel a proton channel through which protons can travel Okay, so now what happens is you're looking at how ATP is going to be synthesized. Now, ATP is synthesized because of the phosphorylation of ADP, adenosine diphosphate. That means addition of an inorganic phosphate group to the ADP is how ATP is synthesized. Now, how does this happen? There is a difference in the proton gradient between the thylakoid and what is present in the stroma. That means in the thylakoid region, if you look here, if you look below, there is a higher gradient, higher concentration of proton ions compared to what is present in the stroma. So this causes the movement of these protons across the membrane into the stroma, down the gradient. In fact, this is called as chemiosmosis. This was studied by a scientist by the name Michel. Okay. So here, as these protons move through this CFO channel through that gray, you know, I told you there is a channel. It starts rotating and the protons also start moving. It churns. So because of this, what happens? These protons are pushed. So there is a force, an energy that is created. So it is moving from a region of higher concentration towards a region of lower concentration through the ATP synthase. And this causes the inorganic phosphate group to be picked up by ADP to form ATP. That is called as photophosphorylation. Why? Because all this happened in the presence of sunlight. That sunlight is what was trapped by chlorophyll. And this is called seeing the excitation of the electrons and the protons that are released. And this is called as photophosphorylation. So now did you understand? Now NADPH is also another energy rich molecule. But this is not the answer that we are looking for. So the proton pump is nothing but the you know, the high energy that is created because of the proton gradient, you know, as the protons move through the channel and it goes through. So that is 
So here the question says, which of the following is not required for the synthesis of ADP? NADPH is not required. Proton pump is required. Proton gradient, definitely it is required. And ATP synthase, without ATP synthase, there is no synthesis of ATP. So what we don't require or what the plants do not require for ATP synthesis by uh, ATP formation by chemiosmosis is NADPH. I hope you have understood that. This is what I showed you and this is what happens as the protons move. The synthesis of ATP from ADP during light reaction of photosynthesis is called photophosphorylation. Chemiosmotic hypothesis was proposed by Michel to explain the synthesis of ATP. Chemiosmosis involves the movement of ions across a biological membrane along the concentration gradient and it helps in the synthesis of ATP. During the light dependent reactions of photosynthesis, there is an accumulation of protons inside the lumen. Lumen is the space I told you. The number of uh, the lumen of the thylakoids. The number of protons is high inside the lumen of thylakoids when compared to the stroma of the chloroplast. This creates a proton gradient and the breakdown of this gradient generates ATP. The gradient is broken down due to the movement of protons across the membrane into the stroma through ATP synthase. The chloroplast ATP synthase has two parts, CFO located in the thylakoid membrane and CF1 that protrudes on the outer surface of the thylakoid membrane facing the stroma. The CFO forms a transmembrane channel for the movement of protons due to which energy is released and that causes conformational changes in the CF1 of the enzyme. Utilizing this energy, ATP is synthesized from ADP by the enzyme ATP synthase. Hence, the synthesis of ATP by chemiosmosis requires a membrane, a proton pump, a proton gradient and the enzyme ATP synthase. ATP and NADPH are the assimilatory power. The energy powers that produced during light reaction of photosynthesis. So what is not required for ATP synthesis during chemiosmosis is NADPH. That is the right answer. A new question for you. Light dependent reaction of photosynthesis occurs in the stroma, thylakoid membrane, inner membrane of chloroplast or the intermembrane space of chloroplast. Now the phenomenon of photosynthesis is a two-step reaction. One is a light dependent reaction and the other one is a light independent reaction. Where does photosynthesis take place? It takes place in the organelle that we call as the chloroplast. Chloroplast is a double membrane organelle. Okay, so it has the outer membrane and the inner membrane. This is the inner membrane. Then this is the intermembrane space. The space between the inner and the outer membrane is the intermembrane space. This inside is filled with Inner to the inner membrane is filled with a jelly-like aqueous fluid called as a stroma or the matrix. Okay. Now in this stroma, you find a number of grana. Singular is granum. Now what is granum? Granum is nothing but stacks of coin-like structures. You know, coin-like structures which are stacked one on top of the other. So this is the granum. Okay. Now these grana. Okay, now if I have to show you a, a granum, this is how it looks. These coin-like structures that are arranged one on top of the other, these are called as thylakoids. Now these grana are interconnected by the stromal lamellae or the fret membrane, we call it. Now each thylakoid has a space called as the lumen. Now the light dependent reaction takes place in the thylakoids. Why does it take place in the thylakoid? Because this is where you find the photosynthetic pigments such as chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, xanthophylls and carotenoids, all organized into units called as photosystems, PS1 and PS2. So the converting, trapping of sunlight, converting it into chemical energy, all that takes place in the thylakoid. So what happens in the stroma? Stroma is where the light independent reaction takes place, the dark reaction takes place. So this chemical energy ATP and NADPH, in fact ATP, is used to fix carbon dioxide into a carbohydrate by using water as well. And what is the byproduct? Oxygen that is released. So now, where does a light dependent reaction takes place? Is it the stroma? No, that's where the dark reaction takes place. Thylakoid membrane? Yes, this is the right answer. Is it the inner membrane? No. The intermembrane space? Definitely no. This is the chloroplast uh, picture that 
we drew in a simple diagram and you saw it. Photosynthesis is a unique process during which the plants utilize relatively simple substances like carbon dioxide, water and synthesize food in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll. The site of photosynthesis is the green plastid chloroplast. Chloroplast is a double membrane bound cell organelle having an inner and an outer membrane. The space enclosed within the membranes is called as intermembrane space. Photosynthesis includes the light dependent reaction and the light independent reaction. The light dependent reaction takes place in the grana. Grana are made up of units called as thylakoids. The thylakoid membrane has pigments to trap light energy and carry out the light dependent reactions. The matrix of the chloroplast is called stroma which has enzymes essential for the light independent reactions that lead to the synthesis of the sugars that is the carbohydrate. Intermembrane space and the inner membrane of the chloroplast does not have any obvious function during the light reaction. So the right answer is thylakoid membrane. That is the right answer. Another new question for you. Light independent reactions of photosynthesis occurs in grana thylakoid membrane, stroma, inner membrane of the chloroplast. Now photosynthesis is a two-step reaction, a light dependent reaction and a light independent reaction. A light dependent reaction is nothing but when sunlight is trapped by the green pigment chlorophyll and of course the other pigments like chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B and xanthophylls and carotenoids. And then chlorophyll A converts this light energy into chemical energy called as ATP. Where does this take place? This takes place in the thylakoids. Now, what are thylakoids? Now, we know that photosynthesis takes place in the organelle called as the chloroplast, which is a double membrane bound organelle. This chloroplast, this is the outer membrane and this is the inner membrane. The space between the two membranes is called the intermembrane space of the chloroplast. Now, this jelly-like matrix is called a stroma. It is filled with an aqueous fluid. It has enzymes, it has plastic DNA and, you know, all the required uh, ingredients, all the requirements for the light-independent reaction. Now, in this stroma are stacks of coins, like structures called as thylakoids, which are arranged in these stacks called as grana. Singular is granum. Okay, and these grana are all interconnected by the fret membrane or the stromal lamellae. Now, when you look at each granum, we see that it is made up of stacks of coin-like structures called as thylakoids. Each thylakoid has a membrane with a space that is in between called as the lumen. It's like this. So, the ingredients or rather all the pigments, the photosynthetic pigments are present in the membranes of the thylakoid and that is where light-dependent reaction takes place. Light independent reaction takes place in the stroma. That's where carbon dioxide, ATP is synthesized in the thylakoids and that energy is used to convert carb, carbon dioxide into carbohydrate and that takes place in the stroma where you don't need light. That's why we call it as a dark reaction. So light independent reaction of photosynthesis occurs where? Is it grana? No. Thylakoid membrane? No. That's where your light dependent reaction takes place. It is the stroma and it is not the inner membrane of the chloroplast. This is the picture of a chloroplast. Photosynthesis is a unique process during which the plants utilize relatively simple substances like carbon dioxide, water and synthesize food in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll. The site of photosynthesis is the green plastid chloroplast. Chloroplast is a double membrane bound cell organelle having an inner and an outer membrane. Photosynthesis includes light in depend Photosynthesis includes light dependent reaction and light independent reaction. Light independent reaction of photosynthesis does not require light. It takes place in the matrix of the chloroplast that is the stroma. The stroma has all enzymes required for the light independent reactions. The detailed reactions occurring in stroma were worked out by Calvin and his co-workers, colleagues. The carbon dioxide fixation occurs during these reactions and there is synthesis of sugar. The light dependent reaction takes place in the grana. Grana are made up of units called thylakoids. The thylakoid membrane has pigments to trap light energy and carry out light dependent reactions. The inner membrane of chloroplast does not have any obvious function during the light reaction. So the correct answer, light independent reaction takes place in the stroma. That is the right answer. A very easy question for you. What is ATP? 
Is it a primary energy carrier? Is it an enzyme? Is it a catalyst? Or is it both B and C? Now, what is a catalyst? Catalyst is something that quickens a chemical reaction. And enzymes are all called as biocatalysts. They do not get affected by the reaction. They help in hastening a reaction. ATP, adenosine triphosphate, is a primary energy carrier. In fact, it is called as, as the energy currency of life. Okay, so B, C, and D are wrong. Let me show you ATP. Adenine, ribose, and three phosphate groups, adenosine triphosphate. In fact, the breaking down, the hydrolysis of ATP releases tremendous amount of energy, 7.3 kilocals per mole of energy. Okay, that is why we call it as a primary energy carrier. That was very easy, right? So, Adenosine triphosphate, ADP, is a primary energy-carrying energy molecule found in cells of all living organisms. ATP can store energy in the form of high-energy phosphate bonds. The hydrolysis of ATP to ADP releases 7.3 kilocals of mole, uh, per mole of energy. Catalysts, are, uh, catalysts accelerate chemical reactions and enzymes are biocatalysts that enhance the rate of a biochemical reaction in living cells. So the right answer, they are primary energy carriers. That is the right answer. A new question for you. The absorption peak of PS1, that is photosystem 1, and PS2, that is photosystem 2, is at. Okay, so before we go into the options, photosynthesis is a light dependent reaction. Photo means light, right? Photon. Now photosynthesis is the process by which green plants Using the chlorophyll, they trap sunlight, convert this light into chemical energy, and with the help of chemical energy, they reduce carbon dioxide using water to a carbohydrate such as glucose and releases oxygen. So, in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll, this takes place. Now, the photosynthetic pigments include the primary pigment that is chlorophyll A. This is the only pigment that can trap light and convert it into chemical energy such as ATP. All the other pigments such as chlorophyll B, xanthophylls, carotenoids called as accessory pigments, they absorb wavelengths and they send it to the reaction center. Okay, light harvesting complexes, these are called as LHCs or light harvesting complexes, these photosynthetic pigments. They are arranged in units called as photosystems, PS1 and PS2. Now, what is the difference between PS1 and PS2? PS1 is able to absorb the light energy in the wavelength of 700 nanometer. This is PS1. And PS2 absorbs a wavelength of 680 nanometer. So, the right answer is D. That is 700 and 680 respectively. A, B and C are incorrect. I think that was easy for you. Pigments in photosynthesis are substances that have the ability to absorb light at specific wavelengths. They are located in the thylakoid membrane of the chloroplast. The pigments are organized into light harvesting complex and are located within photosystem 1 and 2. Hence, each photosystem has several pigments. A single chlorophyll A molecule in the center of photosystem forms the reaction center. Reaction center is surrounded by several accessory pigments that protect the reaction center. In photosystem 1, the reaction center has an absorption peak of 700 nanometers, that is the red light. Hence, it is called as P700. And in PS2, the reaction center has an absorption peak at 680 nanometer, that is red light. Hence, it is called as P680. So, the right answer, 700 and 680 nanometers respectively. That is the right answer.